to Grow Together. My name is Anna McGuire, and it is an honor to be able to have a conversation with you today. But I also want to congratulate you on taking the time to invest in yourself, in your leadership, and really getting to hear from other women who are on the journey. Today's conversation is going to be coming from Northwest University in Washington, and our host is the amazing Jamie Shores. Now, if you got to listen to the other Northwest episode or the episode where we brought together all of the university facilitators, you would know that she is just an amazing fountain of knowledge and wisdom, and she is just so warm. And I was actually telling a teammate not too long ago that she is somebody that I could really sit under and listen to for a significant period of time. So today's conversation, it is going to be sweet. Pull out a note, a sticky note, a journal, whatever it is to get some nuggets, listen for the one thing that you can apply and take home with you, so to speak, today. And you're going to be hearing from not only Jamie, but two students who are at Northwest University, Ella Ward and Ilana Aruha. So enjoy this conversation today. Hello, my name is Jamie Shores. I'm a campus pastor at Northwest University in Kirkland, Washington. And I'm so glad to be here on this episode of this podcast for the Network of Women Ministers College Edition, um, representing Northwest University. And I am joined by two incredible guests, students at our university who are in the College of Ministry. And why don't you all take a few moments and just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. Um, My name is Ilona Araujo. I'm from Salem, Oregon, and I'm a pastoral ministries major here at Northwest. Um, And then something I believe that God has called me to do is to be a full-time vocational ministry, and I have a really big passion for discipleship and empowering other women in ministry. And then, hi, I'm Ella. I'm also studying at Northwest University. My degree is intercultural studies, and I felt called from a young age into missions ministry, whether it's in country, out of country, not sure yet, but some form of some form of cross cultural ministry. Man, I love how even hearing that from both of you and kind of seeing how even now, while you're still in college, you're operating in that calling and ministry is just so fun. And I'm sure we'll get into that maybe a little bit more as we talk about it. So our theme um, right now for this podcast is transform. I think maybe to start with, I'd love to hear from both of you about what's an area in your life that you've experienced God's transformation. I think for me, I have grown up in the church and in a Christian family. So I've been surrounded with the concept of Jesus and being saved by belief in him. But also from a young age, I experienced like loneliness, feeling kind of like on the outside edge of friend groups, like, you know, elementary school and middle school and everything. Um, And with me dealing with like that sense of loneliness, it also led me to kind of pursue works righteousness and trying to be like a really good person. Like, so I guess I could earn my standing before God, before like in my family and in friendships which like led to perfectionism, which of course also comes with a lot of anxiety, trying to make sure you're doing everything perfectly. Uh, and I would say that I wrestled with the, with the balance between like, yes, the Lord, and yes, I want to do everything right, but I hadn't yet grasped completely the understanding mm-hmm. that it's only by God's grace. Mm-hmm. So it, it led me down the pathway of trying to earn my way to God, um, but eventually feeling like, I guess, if God can't bring me freedom from shame yet, from worry and like from downness yet, I guess, I guess I just got to take things into my own hands. Mm -hmm. So I guess that led me down deeper into like depression and into perfectionism, including like with my body, um, basically to the point of like, I guess I just, I'm done with my life. Mm -hmm. I wanted to basically throw it away um, through disordered eating, but I reached rock bottom. (laughs) Like I was like, not like, I didn't feel like I had earned God. I felt like I had failed him, Mm -hmm. but that's where God met me. He reached down into like my darkest time into which the time I was most ashamed of myself. And he said, Ella, no, it's by everything that I've done for you on the cross. I shed my blood for you. I want you to receive my love. It's a free gift that I purchased for you. It's not something that you earn or that you deserve. So from that place of finally realizing, oh, wait, I'm a sinner too. I can't earn my way to God. God's grace finally infiltrated my life in a very deep way. Mm -hmm. And that brought like 
I'm a completely different person now. I went from experiencing like loneliness and feelings of inadequacy to having deep friendships um, and building community from worry and anxiety to peace and a lot of joy, even in hard circumstances. Um, and just having a greater security in who I am in Christ mm-hmm. that only came from receiving the gift of his grace. Yeah. So I'd say that's one of the biggest ways that God has basically made me become born again. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Ella, just, I mean, hearing more of that story and I'd heard some snippets of it too, but no, just hearing like snippets of your story and then hearing it a bit more all put together there. It's just, it's so true. Like God's grace was such a transformative factor in your life. It made such a huge difference. And, and with that too, tell us a little bit more about even that process and journey. Cause I, I imagine, was it like an instantaneous or was it quite a few months or quite a few years? What did that look like? I would say that like the deepest process of like renewing my mind of replacing all of those shameful thoughts and lies from the enemy with scripture. They had really formed a stronghold in my life. It's Mm -hmm. kind of like if you drive in the same pattern over and over, it forms like a rut in the road and you kind of like in your brain, like your mental pathway, you fall into that rut of those Mm -hmm. same lies. Like it's really hard to get back into believing God's truth. So that process took some months Mm -hmm. and one of the biggest ways that I was able to find freedom in the Lord was going with, with a mentor in my life through a book called victory over the darkness. And it basically goes through the process of going out of lies, out of condemnation from the enemy and into like replacing that with truth yeah. and stand firm in who you are in God. Mm-hmm. And what I love about the book is actually on the cover. It shows the transformation of a man who's like kind of huddled in on himself, like kind of curled up to slowly like in different shifting images, finally standing up like erect and like fully confident. And I think that demonstrates what the process was like for me. It was a lot of hard work, but it was me choosing to believe in God. And the spirit was the one who brought the transformation, my mental state and my emotional state and the way that I viewed and accepted my body and the way that God has created me. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would say it was definitely a process and it evolved a lot of hard work of saying, no, I'm not, not good enough. I'm not ugly. I'm not boring. I have been created for a purpose. I am called by name. I am God's child. Like that type of like almost having to say it verbally, like out loud. Yeah. I reject that lie in Jesus name. I replace Mm -hmm. it with this scripture. Oh, but such a good reminder of like, God's grace, God's truth, his spirit, like that is the thing that leads transformation. That is the thing that causes it. It's none of our own willpower or whatnot, because I'm sure there was plenty of moments where you're like, if I could just like mind over matter, I would do this, but Mm -hmm. it needed to be something truly supernatural that came in and it was with how God worked. Mm -hmm. So good. Alana, we'd love to hear from you as well. Just part of your own story of transformation. Yeah, that was so beautiful, Ella. Wow. <laughs> so inspiring. Um, I think similarly, Ella, we share a couple components that, um, you know, growing up for me, I was a very, very shy kid. Um, I grew up and I kind of felt like I didn't have a lot of friends. I was the quiet girl in class. I don't think I talked in class like for real until actually first or second grade, like had spoken a word. And so there was, I always dealt with extreme insecurity in my body about my confidence about like my leadership abilities even like group presentations like I would have full panic attacks I dealt with a lot of anxiety and any single time like I'd be asked to speak in front of people I would almost feel like this grasp on my tongue like you oh, know you can't talk so I was mm-hmm. such an insecure um kid and that like followed me even throughout high school But one thing I always was good at was like committing to school. And so that just became like my drive for so long. Um, But coming into my first year at Northwest, I had a lot of these. I came in with a lot of labels and I carried all of that insecurity with me. And when I received like my calling into ministry, the transformation that God had to do through me was 
just so vast and I was not ready to just, I didn't think I deserved to be transformed or I deserved to be called worthy. And so quite literally, I feel like God's transformation just happened through my confidence and through healing my insecurity. And similarly to what you said, Ella, I think just hitting that rock bottom, like my first year at Northwest and being like, okay, I can't be who I am. I can't be who I'm called to be feeling this insecurity, feeling this anxiety, feeling this shame and feeling like this unworthiness that I feel. And so I literally just remember praying like, God, like I can't do this without you. And um, he really transformed my confidence and my image and who I am. And he reminded me the same things. I mean, that I am made in his image and that if he has called me to something, there is not a single person on this world that can stop that. And he mm -hmm. will, he will see me through till the end and yeah. every day on earth that I am here, he is watching over me and, and he has a purpose for me daily. I love even what you said, like if God has called you to it, there's no person who can stand in the yeah. way. And it's not because of who you are, but it's because of who God is. Right. I mean, again, it's just so beautiful, that story of like, okay, we, I did kind of have to hit rock bottom, but then mm -hmm. the Lord was there, like in that moment, in those moments of frustration and despair, you still felt God so strongly. And then he was able to do something you probably never expected, right? Right. <laughs> in that right. moment. Mm -hmm. And just thinking about it from both of you, like just your own journey with transformation and how God worked through that and worked in you thinking about like other people who maybe, maybe they are in that rock bottom place, or they're in that place where they just feel like they, they can't get a leg up or they're seeking some sort of transformation, but it's not happened yet. Or they are listening to those, those lies that we, you both talked about, like, what are, what do you think are maybe some like misconceptions people have around like spiritual transformation, like the transformation of God that maybe, or even you all experienced in your own journey that it's just helpful to name and say, and kind of be like, actually, instead of this, it's more like this. Yeah. One thing that just popped to right to the top of my head is I think spiritual transformation and people don't realize this requires you to give everything like even the parts in your life that you don't think have to do with spiritual transformation you still must surrender mm -hmm. and a lot of it is your responsibility to surrender like you know god will not force you to surrender anything so you know when it comes to ella and i or for example my example of insecurity if i have like this ongoing issue of insecurity and i don't think it's um like prohibiting my transformation i must surrender it i must surrender all parts of my life yeah, I agree with Alona in that I think for me, I was willing to let God into some areas of my life, but not into everything. And I think a lot of us have like parts of us that we're most ashamed about or like, or most feel like, oh, I've got this on my own or like darkest area of our lives, sins or like areas of pride. And we really do have to let God into everything. And I think for me, I didn't think that I was a prideful person. I thought like I was very shy and timid, timid and like filled with like a lot of insecurities. But I think through the process of my transformation, I realized, oh, wait, there are a lot of things like in my walk with the Lord. Like I feel like I need to earn my way to God and like schoolwork. I feel like I need to do everything perfect. I need to be the perfect daughter. And I'm realizing, oh, I thought I could do it all on my own. That's the definition of pride. <laughs> when you think you can do something on your own apart from God. Uh, and I think for me, that was a misconception that I have to do all of the work and I have to transform myself. Um, but I love scriptures like Ephesians 2.8 that say, for by grace you have been saved through faith and it's not your own doing, it's the gift of God. So I think I had to relinquish my pride, say, Lord, I can't do it on my own. I need you. And like really opening the door for the spirit to do the transforming work and like letting him in. Mm. I think that's what helped me experience true transformation. Yeah. Yeah. What I kind of heard similar things from both of you is like transformation requires surrender and humility. Because it is that admitting, like, I don't have it all together, even in the areas that I think I might, which we all have those areas where we're like, yeah, God, we're doing good. Don't worry about that. 
but sometimes inviting him into that is more of a transformation than we would have ever imagined um, yeah. because we didn't realize that maybe like you were saying, Ella, maybe it was actually a place of pride that was standing in the way of things. So thinking about this too, and both of you being called into ministry um, and, and actively serving in ministry right now, like Alona, I know that you're serving as youth pastor at a church and Ella, you are so active with like even our international student population on campus and so many other areas. Like you're already definitely serving in a fairly pastoral role, both of you with people, but even thinking about reflecting on as you've done this morning about um, your own journey of spiritual transformation. Like how, how can we support others that are going through that? Um, I think something that I've learned is that we really can't do the Christian walk alone. If we're going to experience more of God in our lives, working in and through us, we need other people. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that was such a key part of my transformation, like my mentor coming alongside me to help like renew my mind, like my parents helping hold me accountable, even like when I wanted to go back and sin, like they were saying, Ella, no, it's worth it. Keep fighting with um, with the Lord inside you. Um, so I think it is important once you've experienced transformation yourself to like look for people mm -hmm. who yeah. who need like to experience transformation, but who are also open because they have to be willing to let you in um, to areas of their life that may even be uncomfortable to let people into. Um, but I think for me, something like that I've seen is helpful helping other people experience transformation is speaking scripture into each other's lives because scripture mm -hmm. has power praying with each other. But also um, something that helped me was just hearing other people's testimonies of God's faithfulness in their lives. Yeah. Like, don't be afraid to share how God is moving in your life because like for me, like even after I experienced transformation, like coming out of like disordered eating and everything, I had another relapse when I was like falling back into like worry and anxiety. But I just remember God surrounding me with people just sharing their stories of like, but I'm experiencing this struggle, but God has been so faithful. And I kept mm -hmm. hearing the word faithful, faithful, faithful. I'm like, okay, God's trying to get a message through to me. Mm -hmm. um, so don't overlook the power of your testimony. Yeah. Um, sharing it with other people. And I think that's just like more of like, like bumping into each other, like really being God's community. Um, but I think it's also important that you find someone in your life who God's asking you to disciple, who God's asking you to be their go-to person to help them experience spiritual transformation and discipleship. Because all of us, not just people who are called to vocational ministry, we're all called to ministry in some extent. We're all been given gifts by God. So I think it's really important to be praying, Lord, who is someone who you've placed in my life, who yeah. you want me to walk with and help experience deeper spiritual freedom and joy in life um, so that you can make a disciple. That's what we're called to. And then yeah. they can go on and make disciples. So I think that's really key. Mm, so good. I love it again. Like God didn't call us to follow him on our own, but that community aspect, that church community aspect is so important. I would go off of that too and just say that um, we can also support people by challenging them and inviting them in and and I think really having them in our circle too. Yeah. I know when I moved into this greater Seattle region, I realized how much better people are at the things that I thought that I was going to do or doing. And I think, I think we can support people by just being like, let's learn how to do this thing together that we have a base level learning, but let's you and I, let's do it together and let's learn how to do it. And for me, like with youth ministry, with even any ministry I'm involved in, like it's, it's all about finding people and mentors who have done this a little longer than we have and being like, yeah, this is how, this is what support looks like. And pastor Jamie, you've been that for me, Ella, you've, you've even been that for me in the season. So it's been, it's been really cool to walk alongside you both. Mm -hmm. in that way and just learn learn from you and and do all the fine tuning together yeah you don't have to be perfect you don't have to have all the answers 
you're just you're just willing to speak that life into each other you're willing to share your own story that gives people so much hope like I'm sure both of you can think of multiple stories of people sharing about things that they went through. And even if your story was a little bit different, you were experiencing different things, it still gave you hope because you're like, hey, if God carried them through that, he, what do we think? I think that he can carry me through this. And yeah, it's so, it's so important. And so many people would be the first to say it was not in my own strength that it happened. but it had to completely be the Lord because I couldn't have done that. Um, again, transformation is all about surrender and humility. When we surrender to God, when we surrender to the spirit, when we're humble and realize it's not in our own power, whether we're going through it ourselves or walking through it with others, that's where just the Lord can show up in so many meaningful ways. I'd love to hear a little bit about each of you too. I mean, you shared about your calling at the beginning, but I'd love to hear even for your own call into ministry, what that has looked like from when you first were kind of sensing that to where you are right now and what both of you are, you're graduating at the end of this year, right? Both of you. And it's just kind of like even you're equipping yourself and whatnot, but what, what has that looked like over the last few years for you all? Um, I think my calling has definitely been a process and it's super strange because as I look back at my life and my childhood, I feel like I have always known that I was going to do something in ministry. Um, but because I had, haven't, hadn't seen it model a lot of my life, I was, I just kind of like put it to the side and I was like, I'm delusioned. I don't know why I'm thinking of this. This is so silly of me. Um, but I was actually called into ministry very clearly by God on like three separate occasions. And as I shared a little bit about my, my insecurity and my doubt, I allowed it to just go over my head. And I think I had a lot of pressure um, on me by just like family members and, and those around me, like to be something else that I, mm -hmm. I couldn't be a pastor. I couldn't step into this calling that God had for me. And so I really gave into the pressure, but it was at Northwest where I really experienced that trans transformative, kind of our theme, kind of a calling. And um, I received a prophecy over my life and, and I, I haven't turned back since, but I think the coolest thing is that I've learned that God is so faithful and that God is always reminding us of what he's promised. And God is always coming back to the moments um, and those big, like those just core memories and core times mm -hmm. where God has provided and come through. And he's time and time and time again, reminded me of those exact moments and his faithfulness through that and his promises that always stand. And then ever since it's just been just really God's revealing slow and small things about what's next. And I have no idea, you know, some people are like, you're going to be this, you're going to be that. I have no idea what ministry is <laughs> going to look like for me. So step by step by step, I'm just loving every minute of yeah. it. Yeah. I was having dinner with a mentor of mine last night and just kind of, we talked about how we hold our callings with an open hand yeah. because we have to be prepared that how our calling is played out can be very different than what we think, but it's along God's plans <laughs> and right. so just making sure that yes, we're stepping out and obedient and taking on that calling that he gave us, but also like, you know, Lord, if you need to change the plan a little bit or take us somewhere we didn't expect, that's totally okay. Yeah. And Alona, I just love too. I know that you said some of it was hard because you hadn't seen some of it modeled before, but like now you're getting to model walking in your calling of ministry for other young women that you're influencing too, which like for them, they might not experience that because they've seen a model of someone doing that, which is so powerful and meaningful for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And I resonate with what Alona said about really having a call be step by step. I know some people can receive like a layout of like the next like 20, 30 years of their life from the Lord. But for me, I wasn't able to handle that. The first thing I, I could barely handle, like being called to ministry in the first place, like vocational ministry, thinking, oh, someday I'm going to have to like speak in front of people and like be like a shepherd to like people who are following the Lord and that like terrified me. So God really had to take things in step by step for me. Um, so I think the first part of my calling was just like hearing like the still voice of the Lord in in my spirit, in my in my mind, like not my own thoughts saying, Ella, I'm calling you to ministry. Ella, I'm calling you to missions ministry. And it was confirmed multiple times. And then I heard people around me saying, Ella, yeah, I think you really have a gifting like to be 
a, a shepherd of Christians to be a pastor. So I think it was a gradual acceptance of the call because I couldn't see it in myself yet. I just saw myself as like the shy girl in like the classroom, like who didn't really like um, want to engage fully and like was, a, was scared to talk. So like, how can I be a pastor? So that was like the first step of just gradually accepting that if the Lord's called me, he will make a way for it to happen. And then I think as of recently, especially during my time here at Northwest, I felt like the Lord called me to step into my calling, even though I don't know like what my calling is going to be, like even like two years in the future, I don't know where I'm going to be. He's asked me to take advantage of the opportunities that I'm faced with and yeah. to start stepping into my gifting. So like first semester here, uh, I remember uh, my dad was telling me, Ella, it would be a good idea for you to start a small group. You can't really like learn that necessarily in the classroom. You just have to start living it, start discipling and building community with your friends. So like that was a stepping stone for me, um, starting to see around me like international students who don't necessarily know the Lord, even though we're at a Christian campus and like the Lord saying, Ella, I want you to reach them with my love. I want you to learn what it's like to do relational evangelism, not just sharing like the gospel, but like really trying to seek a way to share it in a way that is meaningful to them yeah. and really like helps them to see, no, this girl like sees me and she cares about me. She's not just trying to get a message across. So I think by stepping into the opportunities that the Lord surrounded me with, he's helped me to grow. Like I wouldn't have grown in my calling if I hadn't started living into it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think at the beginning I was just thinking, okay, it's just, my calling's just something in the future. But if God has called you to vocational ministry I think it's a good idea to start stepping into the ministry opportunities he's giving you yeah. so that you can grow so that you can identify your gifting so that God can continue to speak into your life and speak through you to others. No, that's so good. Like you don't have to wait until you have a degree or you don't have to wait till you're a certain age. You can step into that right away and start learning and walking in obedience. Well, ladies, thank you so much just for sharing so much of your own stories today. Like, and again, I love what we said earlier, like your testimony can be such an encouragement to others. And I truly believe that there are going to be other people who listen to this, who maybe have experienced similar things or at, in the same way might be at that place of rock bottom that the Lord's going to use this to encourage them, use your stories to remind them of his faithfulness. I'm just going to take a moment and pray us out. Um, but so thankful for each of you and just the light that you are on our campus, but also into the various places that you're serving beyond Northwest too. Let's take a moment and pray. So Jesus, thank you so much for Ella. Thank you for Alona. Thank you for the calling that you have upon their lives and how you have transformed them, how you have molded them, and how they have just seen your faithfulness in every step of the way of their journey, just um, getting to know you more and more, Lord. Thank you for their obedience um, to step out and embrace what you have called them to do. Lord, we just pray too that if there are people who listen to this, Lord, that are in that place of rock bottom, that are in that place of despair, they will hear the truth that has been spoken, that you are there, God, and you have the power to transform. You have the power to make what is dark and difficult, uh, bright and glorious because of who you are, God. So we just pray blessings upon any of those people and that they will just experience the grace of you in their or situations that they are facing. Lord, again, I just pray over Ella and Alona, your, your continued blessings over them as even this next year, um, as they're finishing up their time at Northwest, Lord, and the question of what is next is at the forefront of their minds. God, that they will just see how you are directing their steps and you will open the doors that they need to go through. Thank you so much for your goodness and your faithfulness and God, that you are the God of transformation and that you offer that to us um, as long as you offer that to us time and time again. We are so thankful for that. We love you, Jesus, so much. Amen. Amen.